So I am really excited and, and really just honored to be here. I was excited when uh, Stronger Marriages asked me to do this. I love presenting this content and many other uh, types of content. I love teaching uh, couples and working with couples. And so I was really uh, just excited to, to present this. So let's jump into this. Uh, a little bit of an overview of what we're going to talk about tonight. And as Camilla said, we're going to, I'm going to teach for about 45 minutes, uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. And then we're going to jump into a QA and a uh, so that you can ask some questions uh, and submit some questions to uh, Camilla. So we're going to talk a little bit about attachment. And I know that may be new for some people. And what does that mean? So we're going to get into that. And then we're going to talk about what are often referred to as attachment styles. And uh, I, I like to refer to them as adaptations, and I'll get into that a little bit more. And then we're going to figure out how we can apply this new knowledge uh, to your relationship. And I, I have found in the couples that I've worked with, and even in my own relationship, the, these principles to be um, fantastic and, and very sound and very helpful uh, and, and very healing. Uh, so let's let's uh, continue with this. So part one, I I love sharing this particular study. I always like to start out with kind of a, a an interesting study uh, as we're talking about attachment. This particular study was done several years ago uh, by Jim Cohen out of the University of Virginia, and he's a very talented neuroscientist. And what he did is he took happily married women, happily married women, and he put them in an MRI machine, an fMRI machine and took pictures of their brains as they were looking at pictures above them. And on these pictures, there were um, circles and uh, red X's. And the researchers told these happily married women, when you see a red X uh, above you on the screen, there's about a 20% likelihood that you will receive a mild electric shock. And so they wanted to see what their brain did when those red X's came up. A little bit of a twist on this study is what they did is um, they had them in there alone. And then they had at one time a, a stranger come up and hold their hand as they were going through this. And then finally, the last phase of it, they had their husbands uh, come in and hold their hand. And remember, these are all happily married women. What they found is when the women were alone uh, in, in the room and they had to go through this uh, pretty stressful experience, that their brains kind of lit up like a Christmas tree, very you know, high anxiety, stress, fear, because they may get shocked. Uh, and, and it actually decreased a little bit when the stranger came in and held their hand. But what was interesting is when the husbands came in and held their hands, it was as if there was um, no real uh, activity as far as brain activity when the red X, there was no, there was very little stress, very little fear. In fact, some of the women even said, when it did shock me, I, it didn't even hurt that bad. So what can we learn from this? And this, this example kind of encapsulates a lot of what we're gonna talk about to, tonight. So what can we learn? One of the things that we know from the research is that feeling alone is extremely difficult for our brains. Uh, we know that kind of a universal punishment throughout the world is isolation or solitary confinement. Because we know that when you put somebody by themselves, it's really, really hard on the brain. So when we feel alone, it, it, it's difficult to manage for us. And then as you think about the husbands coming in, what we learned from that is that our partners can be what are sometimes called a hidden regulator, a hidden regulator of our psychological and emotional well-being. Okay? And when we know, when we've had lots of experiences of safety, when we know our partner is accessible to us, meaning they'll be there for us when we need them, they're responsive in that moment, and they're engaged in helping us get those emotional needs met, we are stronger. Uh, the research is very, very clear on that. Uh, and so that's, that's one of the things that we want to spend some time on. How do we pull this out? How do we kind of uh, spend some time unpacking it? And then how can you apply it to your relationship? So let's, we, we, have, to found, we have to build this foundation. Uh, this is attachment or attachment theory is really a theory of love and bonding. It's, it's a science of how do we bond? How do we connect to people? How do we repair when that disconnection, when that connection is, uh, is uh, broken? And one of the things that I find when I've worked with couples and when I have uh, in my therapy practice and when I have taught this curriculum, 
uh, it's that a lot of people will say, I love this because it really gets to the heart of the matter. Uh, we don't get into all these nuances of communication skills and conflict resolution and you know, doing nice things here and though. Those are helpful and important, but this really gets at kind of the heart of the matter. And so one of the things I, I often help my couples understand that I work with is to become a convert to attachment theory. Because if you don't believe the research around this, it, a lot of this isn't going to, to really land. Uh, but there has been literally thousands of studies out there in the last 40 to 50 years that has uh, verified this, uh, that there is something out there as far as an attachment. So adult attachment theory, for some of you, this is gonna be a little bit of a re relief as I share these principles and you're gonna think, wow, I've always kind of thought that there was something like that, but I never really had a name to it. I never really uh, could articulate it. So I, hopefully that I can articulate that for you tonight. And for some of you, it's gonna feel a little bit of foreign. You're gonna feel like this is all new to me. I don't understand that. And it may even bring up a little bit of anxiety as, as new information can sometimes do. But I would ask that you, regardless of where you are, that you approach this with an open mind because a lot of these principles you may not have ever heard. Um, not that it's uh, you know, buried necessarily in academic journals, but uh, it's, it's pretty sciencey, it's pretty researchy. And so one of the things that we've been trying to do over the last 15 to 20 years is really get this information out there, get these principles out there to, to help couples uh, to heal and to strengthen their relationship. So one of the things, uh, if there was a banner that we could put up around attachment is it's all about survival. Uh, we know in general, when people feel more securely attached, they're going to thrive more, they're gonna live longer. Um, when they feel that uh, safe, connected, connectedness to a, a loving spouse, they, they just seem to do better. Uh, there's lots of studies around uh, healing from or recovering from cancer or heart surgery. And when marriages are doing well and they feel secure in that marriage, they, they tend to heal better and heal faster. And so we have important relationships in our life. And we, and, and we have what are called you know, a trusted other. And when we have that trusted other, it really shapes the view, how we view ourselves, how we view other people, and essentially how we view the world. And as you can see this little girl on here, she's pretty securely attached to whoever she's uh, uh, looking at. And in that moment, if you've ever taken somebody, uh, a child to a park, one of the things you'll notice is they'll sometimes look back. And that's kind of attachment in action. And essentially that they are checking in. Are you there for me? Are you accessible? Are you gonna be there if I fall or I get lost? And so she's looking back saying, look, I'm, I'm exploring, I'm doing something risky. Are you there for me if I, if I fall? Are, are you gonna be able to take care of me?